Hello, pianist. You probably recognize Chopin's famous prelude in E minor, opus 28, which is harmonically complex and lush. It's a great piece to demonstrate the impact of our different chord qualities of minor, major, augmented, and diminished, the effect that they can have on music. We will learn how to construct these chords based on any root or tonic note. That way you can play repertoire, such as Chopin's Prelude One Day. By recognizing these chords, I'll teach you their symbols to analyze music within pop genres and also classical genres. We'll also practice through a technique where you can practice those chords in any key. And I'll conclude with playing the final half of Chopin's Prelude in E minor so you can hear the impact of these chords along with an analysis. So let's jump in. You've learned two qualities already, those major and the minor chords. We constructed them from our major five finger scales, but we didn't really talk yet about the half step patterns within the actual triads themselves. So with me, find your C major triad, which is a familiar spot we've been going to. So this is built up of a major third on the bottom, C to E, and a minor third on the top. So let's talk through the half steps. So C, if I count C sharp as the first half step, one, two, three, four. There are four half steps within a major third. For a minor third, one, two, three. There are three half steps, so something good to memorize is within a major triad, you have a major and a minor third, or half steps of four plus three. You can use this concept to transfer it to any starting root. Let's say you forget how to play in the key of A flat major. You have a piece in A flat with all these major triads or a chord chart with A flat major. Start with A flat as your root, four half steps, one, two, three, four, and I'm on C, three half steps, one, two, three, and you've just built an A flat major triad. Let's also talk through the symbols that you'll see. Within pop or modern chord charts, you would see uh, the major chord, chord written as an uppercase. You might also see a triangle if you're reading a jazz chord chart. That way you can distinguish majors between minor chords. You might see a triangle. In minor chords, it would be a little in next to it. Uh, back to major chords though. In classical notation, you would just see an uppercase Roman numeral like a one, a four, or a five. So into those minor chords I just mentioned, let's play C minor. Its third construction is a minor third on the bottom, a major third on the top. Let's count our half steps out. C up to E flat, one, two, three. Three half steps, E flat up to G, one, two, three, four. So our minor triads are a three plus a four in terms of their half step construction. Let's apply this to the key of, how about B flat minor? Start with B flat, count up three half steps, one, two, three, I have D flat, up four half steps, one, two, three, four. I have B flat, D flat, F, or B flat minor. For your chord symbols, I mentioned you will see that lowercase m or minor for uh, jazz chords. For minor chords in classical, you will see them written as a lowercase letter. This would be a lowercase i, or maybe a lowercase 4 if you were playing an E flat chord in the key of B flat minor. All right, so hopefully that's some review, but you can use that 3 plus 4 for a minor chord. Let's move to some new chord qualities. Augmented. The word augmented literally means something that's made larger in value or size. Let's go back to C major. To make an augmented chord, you're going to take the fifth of the chord, which is G, raise it up one half step, and it becomes G sharp. You might need to slide in towards the fall board to get your shorter fingers to be on that black key comfortable. Let's find what our triads are. So within our triad, we have a major third and another major third. Maybe you remember by now that is four half steps and four half steps. Let's say you have a chord chart which gives you an F sharp augmented, which would be a really hard chord to play. Use your half steps to build it out. So start on F sharp, up four half steps, one, two, three, four. Back A sharp, one, two, three, four. To play C double sharp at the top. F sharp, A sharp, C double sharp. All right, chord symbols. Within your jazz music, you will see an augmented symbol or even a plus sign. Within classical notation, you would see the Roman numeral and the plus sign as well to show that that chord has been enlarged. Last up is the diminished chord. Let's go back to the key of C. I'll let you hear it first. They're very dark and somber in color. They often are built on seven chords or two chords. Go back to your major triad. 
Lower the third one half step E to E flat. Lower the fifth one half step G to G flat. You have a diminished chord. The thirds are two minor thirds, which are built up of three and three half steps. So think three plus three. You will see that written as dim or a degree sign, a little circle for classical and uh, pop notation. Let's transcribe this chord to another key. Let's go to E flat diminished. Use your half step pattern. One, two, three. One, two, three. E flat, G flat, B double flat. Okay, once you have practiced constructing those triad qualities on different roots, you can practice them within a more concise exercise. That way you can remember how it feels and not having to watch these chords. Remember, we want to learn the theory within our chords, but also just be able to feel them and watch our score, which will make you a better reader of repertoire, be able to improvise on chord charts if your eyes are up on the score. So let's try this in the key of C major. It's a simple pattern. It goes like this. Major chord, augmented, major, minor, diminished. You can transpose that anywhere. Let's go to another simple key of G major. Get used to how the feel, feeling of it. The fifth goes up a half step, back down for major, third down a half step for minor, fifth down a half step for diminish. Let's go to the key of F. It's also practice naming these note names. The chords will still utilize the same three notes all along and just alter them by sharps or flats. So we have FAC for major, augmented, FAC sharp, back to major, minor F, A flat, C, diminished, F, A flat, C flat. So in summary, practice building those four triad qualities on any key. You can also practice improvising on these chords. If you just do a Google search of augmented chords, chord charts, there's tons of Beatles pieces and other pieces that you can practice these and hear their, their different effects. In conclusion, I will start at major 13 of Chopin's Prelude in E minor. I have an analysis that you will be able to see, and I have four examples of those triad qualities you'll hear in E minor chord to start. Then you'll hear a diminished seventh chord, so it just adds on another minor third at the top. Then you'll hear at the climax of this piece an augmented chord built on the five of six. So he's setting us up for a deceptive cadence at 21 with the C major chord as well. So listen to the different impact that these chord qualities add to our Chopin's prelude.